good afternoon uh, today i'll be presenting a, a small talk on uh, interpolation schemes that are used in uh, lookup tables uh, this is the outline of the talk okay so i'll uh, briefly uh, you know tell something about the transistor for which we make this uh, lookup tables then i'll uh, briefly describe the lookup table approach then we look at some uh, interpolation choices and uh, later on uh, i'll probably discuss uh, interpolation schemes that are specific specific to the mosfet and finally i'll conclude so this is a cartoon of a uh, mosfet so basically it is a it's a switch uh, so the voltage on the gate actually uh, you could control the switch the switch is between the two terminals drain and source and by applying a voltage on the gate you can either turn off the switch or on uh, so actually like uh, we are interested in uh, uh, simulations that involve thousands of these transistors so actually what we we want, we want is we are interested in uh, to do simulations we need a representation of the current in terms of the terminal voltages and other uh, uh, physical <coughs> parameters of the device for example uh, what's shown there is the length of the device or uh, not mark the tox but the thickness of the gate oxide etc so we want to actually represent uh, we want to get a representation of uh, these uh, terminal currents very accurately so normally what is done is uh, generally one has a base level physics model and uh, there are many things you know that can't be captured by uh, the base level physics and the model is made accurate by having lot of uh, fitting parameters uh, these fitting parameters are used uh, to incorporate uh, secondary effects to get better accuracy and sometimes we really don't understand what's happening so just use the first parameter something very very elementary is something like you know id uh, the current in a mosfet if it's a very long channel <coughs> device it would vary as vg minus vt to the power of 2 but uh, you could have i mean as you scale these devices it so happens that uh, the square law no longer holds so you just put an empirical parameter alpha and do a parameter extraction and fit it i mean this is a very uh, i mean the, generally uh, the models are much much more complicated than this and uh, in today's compact models we could have uh, fitting parameters more than 100 fitting parameters will be there in uh, such models so an another another approach to representing these things accurately is to just store the value of the current at uh, known uh, voltages of vg and vd and then to use uh, the stored data you interpolate and get the id so this this uh, technique is called uh, lookup table and this uh, technique can be used in places where you know the physics is not completely understood or it's very hard to model uh, the device because you really don't know the physics behind it uh, just like to add a word of caution that uh, uh, though it sounds interesting there are a lot of limitations of this approach because when you do something like this it becomes completely empirical and when something is completely empirical you really don't have a handle of uh, suppose you vary something uh, if say physical parameter you vary the length of the device or the width of the device then you i mean if you have a physical model you know what's happening so for a circuit designer he knows actually if he varies the length you know the output impedance will go up or something like that but here it's very hard to um, do such kind of analysis you really won't know because the coefficients would just change in the lookup table so this is the problem actually i mean you can just forget about whatever i told before it's abstracted like this uh, basically suppose you have a function which depends on vg and vd so what we are interested in We we just have uh, these things tabulated at the grid, and the grid could be non-linear. I've just taken only a two-dimensional case, just for simplicity. Now the idea is that uh, in practice, actually, you would want to find out the value uh, of the function f, which here is a current, at any arbitrary point. So if it doesn't fall on the grid, then you need to do some uh, interpolation to get that value. So I mean, we would ideally ideally like you know. Uh, that the interpolate function to, should be smooth at least the first derivative should exist this is what is known as c1 class then it should be i mean uh, in mosfets it's a requirement i mean it's a physical device so the current is generally monotonic so we want the interpolation to be monotonic and uh, from implementation point of view we want uh, things to uh, occupy least memory and they should be fast and accurate so uh, the simplest thing would be to just do a linear interpolation that means uh, suppose i just take a one dimension case to just make things more clear uh, first you decide i mean you locate where the interval is where uh, you are seeking 
So once you know that, you already know what is uh, what are the values stored at the grid points. So you just take the equation of straight line f of x, which is x1 plus f x2 minus. I mean, this is the slope times x minus x1. This is very easy to implement, but uh, it. I mean, what you will see is uh, if you look at the derivative, you know, it's it's kind of constant. In that interval, you will get one slope. In the next interval, you will get one another slope. So if you actually, I mean, this is a trace that is shown. I mean, this is the current, and uh, that's the derivative of that current. You'll see that it's not very smooth. This can give some problems in sim simulation. But uh, another very interesting thing to note about this is it gives a monotonic representation. The reason for that is when you have a straight line, the parameter that controls that straight line is the slope. So it, uh, it's either up slope or down slope. I mean, it, it will ensure uh, monotonicity automatically. Uh, actually, this thing is something very difficult to get in uh, other kind of interpolation. So now, uh, what can be done to uh, avoid this problem of this staircase. So one natural choice would be to try to increase the order of the polynomial. So what you can do is uh, use a second order polynomial. The simplest way to construct a second order polynomial is what is known as a construction by Lagrange. So uh, suppose uh, the region of interest is uh, that region between x1 and x2. So you construct a polynomial that passes through three points. The construction is given like this, x minus x2 into x minus x3 by this thing. You can just see that if you put x equal to x2 or x3, it gets cancelled. And you just add them up like this. Okay. So this actually gets rid of the staircase shape in the derivative. But uh, you'll still see there's a catch that uh, when you're in this interval x1 and x2, the derivative which you evaluated x2 is coming from this function considering x1, x2 and x3. Now when you evaluate the derivative of x2, when the point uh, lies in the interval x2, x3, you will get a different derivative. Basically, the derivatives won't match at the end points, which probably we don't want. And uh, this thing will never guarantee monotonicity because you really can't control the shape of the curve. What you can just tell is it will pass through those three points, but in between you don't have a control over it. So uh, there's a technique that's uh, been uh, proposed by some workers, Schramm et al. So what they basically do is, it's a little complicated, but the gist of the thing is that you use two Lagrange polynomials and uh, blend them suitably so that at the end points, uh, however way you evaluate, the derivative should match. So this is the, uh, I mean, uh, these are some simulations that I did. Uh, so you can see that uh, after uh, using this uh, blended Lagrangian, what happens, you can see that the derivatives become uh, uh, smooth. You, you just get rid of the staircase behavior. Although you would notice that the current itself, you know, there's not much change in the shape of the current. So sometimes only having current plots can be very misleading. Because you really, I mean, this looks very smooth and things like that, but problems only come when you look at the derivatives of that. So uh, we just saw some schemes that were uh, kind of general. They really didn't exploit the nature of the device characteristics. Uh, but if you look at a MOSFET uh, device characteristics, this is the current. And what's seen on the left-hand side, it's plotted in log scale. So you'll see that uh, until some point, the current has some kind of an exponential behavior. And uh, after that, it kind of has a polynomial behavior. So what can be done is, uh, you know, you can uh, probably fit, uh, if, you, if you fit uh, th this data using log scale and this data using uh, linear scale, then probably you could uh, reduce the storage. Uh, this combined interpolation uh, technique was proposed by uh, uh, Victor and uh, the idea is very simple that uh, the region where it bends off, this is kind of taken as a threshold voltage <coughs> and below this, you do what was discussed earlier but on the log data. And uh, after that point, you do, uh, you do interpolation using uh, data on the linear scale. And in between this region, you just blend uh, these two interpolation schemes as was discussed in the previous uh, section. So this is the last, uh, uh, so we looked at IDVG. Now probably if you look at IDVD, and uh, uh, you can probably even exploit this. So the idea is that most of these curves look similar in shape. So if you can normalize that, that is take each curve and uh, divide that curve by its maxima and just plot it. So these are the normalized curves. So the observation here is that you can uh, treat any one of this as a template. You just store one trace and try to get the other traces by uh, a nonlinear operation on this. Uh, so you'll, you'll, you'll see that, uh, for example, if you choose one of this as a trace, and you'll see that all of these things bend at this knee point. So what can be done is you can apply some uh, transformation to this template function to warp it so that uh, the knee matches at this point. 
So that's what is uh, explained here. So ID then becomes uh, th this, you know, TVD is the template function. Then you apply the warping factor to uh, make sure that the knees coincide. Then this beta VG is the scaling ratio. That is the ratio of this by this at a particular VG. Then you account for uh, uh, this slope. I mean, this is not a straight line. There's some slope with respect to VD. That is accounted uh, by using this. Actually, this technique uh, uh, reduces storage, uh, but it might not be very accurate. Uh, so finally, I would just like to conclude that uh, you know, lookup table approach is attra attractive for emerging devices, and uh, one should choose the choice of interpolation function. I mean, it's crucial in implementing the table-based uh, lookup approach in terms of accuracy, storage, etc. So these are the references, and thank you for your attention. <laughs>